just out of business will be search and rescue um, to ensure that we can account for every single citizen and resident who was on island um, during this uh, really devastating hurricane. Rapid intensification is just like it sounds. A storm, a tropical storm, cyclone, typhoon, hurricane, that rapidly intensifies. Now the definition is 35 miles per hour or greater in 24 hours. Now take Maria. Maria went from a category one to a category five in 15 hours. For true RI or rapid intensification, you need a couple things. 86 degree Fahrenheit water or greater and no shear. Now, so of course, the water down in the tropics is very warm. But what about this shear thing? We hear about it in tornadic thunderstorms. Those storms want a lot of shear. Wind going in different directions and different speeds with height. A hurricane wants no shear. No wind direction change, no wind speed change with height. It wants to be the only thing out there making its own wind, not getting blown apart. So why is rapid intensification important? Well, you can go to bed one night expecting a tropical storm and have a Category 2 on your doorstep the next morning. We have been told that it's category three and everybody was so relaxed and nonchalant about it. And then by the time we got to the island, it's a category five. We are stuck in our houses, we come out, everywhere is damaged. And before we know it, people are raiding the grocery stores and getting all the food and there's no clean water. Many of us like our houses got flooded, uh, things like some of yeah. us could only escape with just our passport. Yeah, and houses fell on some of the students. Yeah. Also. We so some people don't have students. Any. Hello, good afternoon, and a warm welcome to ABS and Tigers and the region's news authority. I'm Garfield Burford. We interrupt regular programming to bring you breaking news on TV, on radio, and online. And we welcome our viewers right across the region and indeed across the world. We continue our extensive reporting on the impact of Hurricane Maria, menacing malevolent Maria. Thankfully, the damage was minimal here in Antigua as this country was outside of the range of the hurricane's most powerful winds. However, the Commonwealth of Dominica was not so fortunate, however. Maria left a trail of death and destruction there, unfortunately. The monstrous menace of Maria, a Category 5 hurricane, made a direct hit on the Nature Isle Monday night into Tuesday morning. And in the words of Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt, the island was brutalized. Prime Minister Skerritt surveyed the devastation on his country from the air yesterday morning. And he's been doing that since yesterday, over the, certainly over the past 24 hours. He now joins us live in studio, and it is our distinct pleasure and privilege here on ABS to talk to Prime Minister of the Commonwealth of Dominica, the Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt. He'll be with us, certainly, for the next half an hour or so. Thanks very much, Prime Minister. We really appreciate you talking you. with us. Thank you. Firstly, 
our sympathies or commiserations here in Antigua and Barbuda and across the region for what you've suffered from Hurricane Maria. Yeah. All right. I, I want to thank, first of all, uh, ABS. Uh, you've been very helpful uh, before the storm and during the storm and after the whole hurricane. And to, to the Prime Minister of Antigua and Barbuda and his cabinet and the people of Antigua have been, uh, have been exceptional. Uh, the, the country was devastated. Uh, um, and of course, our prayers and thoughts go out to Puerto Rico and St. Croix, um, the Bahamas, and of course, the, it's our understanding that the hurricane will go up to uh, mainland United States. Uh, so our thoughts and prayers are with these islands. Uh, Take us about the, what you saw from the air when you, when you surveyed complete, from the area. Today. Almost complete devastation in, in some villages. I mean, first of all, every village in Dominica, every street, every cranny, every person in Dominica was impacted by the hurricane. Uh, we have no running water now, we have no electricity and no um, power. Uh, we have uh, very limited now telecommunication services by WhatsApp mainly. Um, all of the telecommunication services down. Uh, private homes have been uh, damaged, uh, some beyond any form of repair, which, um, all flat on their faces. Uh, many of our schools um, have been uh, destroyed. Our main hospital is with no electricity now. Um, they've been running a, a very, very, um, uh, very difficult um, operations. And with generators? No generators. The generator had to be um, set aside because of the flooding. And one had to, well, we're now doing an assessment of electricals to see if we can turn it back on. Um, this is, I've been working for the last 96 uh, hours, non-stop, trying to provide care to the patients. Uh, communication to many parts of the country is impossible. We'll have to access villages by, uh, by sea uh, and also by helicopter. Um, it, is, it, has, it, has been, it has been brutal and um, uh, we've never seen such destruction. Uh, unprecedented, Prime Minister. Unprecedented. Uh, it will take us a very, very long time to, to get back to this, to, to our state. So, so our, our main preoccupation now is search and rescue to determine how many uh, are dead, how many are missing, how many we need to rescue. Uh, providing relief to many parts of the country, uh, water and other essential supplies. Because we prepared pretty well for the hurricane. People stockpile the supplies, but most of it got wet and, 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 and flooded. Yes. So it's of no value to anybody. So right. a lot of communities are without drinking water and, and um, basic food items. So we're trying today to get those items to them as quickly as possible. Right. We'll talk more about the relief supplies, yeah. uh, Prime Minister, and the relief effort. Let's talk about the death toll. Uh, what, I mean, there have been a number yeah. of different numbers which have been put forward. Yeah. What, what is the official group? We, we don't have the, 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 the total count because we have not been to some communities. I have been able to land uh, in some of the communities and the, the authorities here provided me with the, the number of people who have died. So far, we would have buried in excess of 15 people. There in, it is in one village, 13 people missing. In another village, five people missing. Uh, another community, two. And we can say that they're, because their homes are no longer standing. Uh, they've, been, they've been washed by the, um, by the rivers there. Uh, we have not been to many villages and just going by air, looking at the situation. If, if um, there are no fatalities, then it's a miracle. I'm hoping to go there tomorrow morning, if not, if not this evening. Um, especially in the Canal Lego territory where the indigenous people reside, uh, the east coast of the country. Uh, I would be, it would be a, a total miracle if there are no fatalities in, that, in, in those villages. So, you have, so 15 persons have so far been buried, yeah. one five. Yeah. Talk to me about the villages, Prime Minister, where these deaths have occurred. Uh, you're talking about Point Michel uh, in Grand Bay, uh, houses collapsing people. Uh, in a place called Gotto Village in Tubla. Uh, in Marigot, there was one death there. Uh, in um, in Delis, a community called Delis in the east, in the extreme east. Uh, we had uh, 
um, some deaths in, in the community called Dodan, uh, close to Portsmouth in the north. Um, Jubla. As a matter of fact, when I visited Jubla yesterday, they were just having the burial service oh uh, for the deceased person. This is a 71 year old uh, lady. Uh, so, and the, people have buried the, the, the dead because uh, of the health concern there. Uh, so, the residents have taken the responsibility to bury the people. So, all of the people who we know are dead have been buried. So, in addition to these 15, you're saying at least another 16, 17 persons are missing? That's for the villages we know. And um, we will have a better assessment by tomorrow when we visit the other communities. This was brutal, Prime Minister. Right. Um, it's, um, it's, it's, it's a miracle too that there were not um, many more deaths. Uh, people had to explain to me the, where they took shelter during the hurricane. Uh, people were just exposed to the elements of the hurricane. Uh, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Uh, people were hiding in the cupboards, um, you know, cramping themselves in the kitchen cupboards to survive. Uh, you know, um, in my case, for example, I, ha I had to put a, a mattress over my head, uh, two police officers to, to um, prevent the falling um, roofs from coming onto us and so on. So there are a number of people who have been, uh, who've been really traumatized um, by this. Uh, little kids are meeting me, you know, and ask me, ask me why did Jesus do that, you know? Oh you can't understand, understand this um, situation. Talk to me more, Prime Minister, please, about the experience, you touched on it during the storm, during the passage of Hurricane Maria, which made a direct hit. I mean, we were looking at the satellite imagery here with the eye passing directly over Dominica. Your experience, I mean, when, describe for me when the roof started to go. Tell me about it. I mean, the, <clears throat> the speed of the winds, I mean, you were hearing the sounds um, and you were hearing things moving around you. Um, things falling, it's, it's dark, very dark, pitch dark, no electricity, so you do not know what's happening. And, and that was the most traumatizing part of it. Things were happening to you and to your neighbors and you could not see what was happening, because it was pitch dark. Uh, and I just knew, once my roof went, what means to nine in the, in the evening, that there was gonna be serious destruction in the country because the roof was pretty sturdy. Uh, uh, so from the time daylight appeared and I was able to look at my neighbors, every single person in the area where I live, their homes were impacted. Every single person, uh, with no exception. Um, and in some cases, no matter how well or properly constructed your roofs were, the speed of the wind, the velocity of the wind, the, the merciless nature of the wind, uh, we frame, you know, was, 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 was totally devastating. And uh, if your homes were not, uh, if your roofs were not blown off or your homes were not crushed to the ground, you suffered um, tremendous flooding. So even, for example, myself, when I went down to the basement, all of the windows were smashed. We had to, uh, and the doors, and we had to break the doors, the other doors, so that they do not become, they do not become, um, create uh, missiles and, and injure us. Um, so I could, we could feel the wind, we could feel the rain. Um, uh, and it started flooding. But luckily, the basement was two steps. So one level, another level. So the water was flowing from the higher level to the lower level. Otherwise, the water, the water level would have risen and, yes. and, and created. So people had the situation. So they went to the basement, started flooding, and they had to move, run to another neighborhood. So one guy said to me, look, his family moved to a neighbor's home. From the time they got there, as they got there, the roof went. And they had to go to another home and when they got to the other home the roof went really? um, so people were out you know um, during the high winds um, experiencing this hurricane and as I said it is just a come we have many deaths um, but it is just a miracle that we do not have hundreds of deaths in the country it's a miracle that there were not hundreds of hundreds of deaths because when you look at the destruction and people were in those homes or uh, out in the, in, the, in the open it's just um, Fortunate. You had to put a mattress over your head. Yeah. Tell me about that. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm the list of the apostles. The people who had it more difficult than myself, you know. Um, you know, uh, 
And my preoccupation then was not necessarily about myself, it was about um, the other communities I know that are vulnerable. And we had fortunately gotten a lot of people to take the hurricane seriously uh, because we were, we were on the air constantly pleading and beseeching people, let us take this hurricane seriously. Um, fortunately for, for, for the majority population, they did. So they went into shelters. Yes. And the shelters in, in the vulnerable communities um, survived because they had concrete roofs, so at the school, some schools and, and um, public and private buildings. So most of the shelters, or a number of them survived. Um, though there was some flooding and so forth, but they were not exposed to the elements um, in any severe manner. Prime Minister, there are many uh, Dominicans living here in Antigua and throughout the region and throughout the world who are watching this broadcast online uh, who would want to know what, would be, what, what in your estimation so far has been the worst affected area? It's difficult to say. Um, every country, every part of the country, either 95 percent or 99 percent or 85 percent or 80 percent, everywhere in Dominica has received a serious beating. Every part. If, you were not, if it was not by the wind, it was by a uh, river and uh, river coming to your homes and siltation, um, submerging your homes. Uh, every part of the country, whether it is the upper middle class, or the middle class, or the working class communities, there were, there were no classes as far as the hurricane is concerned. So this now, Prime Minister, is a massive relief effort that will be required. Uh, tell me, where are the displaced residents now at this point? Are they still in shelters? Yeah, some of them are shelters. Uh, we're resident people, so the day after the hurricane, many people are trying to knock back the roofs and, and, and create a place. People have the mattresses out um, um, in the sun, trying to get them dry, and whatever clothes, clothing material you could have um, uh, secured. They've been trying to go to the rivers and wash them and put them up, or water collected from the rain. Uh, so people are on the move to clearing the streets to create vehicular access and, uh, to their homes and to public uh, buildings. Uh, many people are in shelters. Uh, some are with neighbors uh, whose homes will have um, a few homes that will have survived. But there are many who, who do not know where to sleep at night. Yeah, yeah, that situation. Wow. Yeah. Another day and another massive response to the CPC's drive, drop-off and donate for Dominica appeal. Thanks to a steady flow of traffic through the car parked here in the Pine, volunteers were able to fill a 50-foot container with a variety of items for the thousands of residents, most of whom are without basic necessities. Marketing officer Nicole Collins says the response was overwhelming. We cannot believe the amount of things that we have been able to collect, how Barbadians have responded to the initiative. We had a truck go down to the Coast Guard yesterday and we now have a container which we're now packing and we also have, the help has been overwhelming as well. We also have volunteers from the UWA Barbados Association students. We also have, yeah, as you can see, we have Soldiers here as well, assisting with because it's a lot of heavy lifting and pretty much overall it's, it has been a success. She says for the most part, people stuck to the list of requested supplies. We've gotten adult pampers, children baby pampers, we've gotten wipes, we've gotten a lot of water and we a lot of the personal care items that we appealed for, we were able to achieve. We even got wheelbarrows, brand new wheelbarrows. We've also had Wills Primary School. They, they did their initiative in-house and they brought their things here. What's the most immediate need now, Prime Minister, um, in terms um, of the relief effort? We need a lot of um, tapulins and um, supplies. It's, it's a difficult, it's, it's really an extraordinarily difficult uh, moment for Prime Minister Skerritt, uh, who, as he said, has uh, given us the opportunity uh, to share, with, share his story with the world. And the Nature Isle has been an extraordinarily resilient country. Um, you would have heard yesterday from Hartley Henry, the Prime, Minister's, uh, uh, the Prime Minister's principal advisor, telling ABS how difficult it is. And obviously, it has been an extraordinarily difficult moment for the Prime Minister. Um, water for the people, um, food supplies, um, tarpaulins. Blankets, um, urgently. And then this massive contribution from Supreme Distributors, 
Accounts clerk Tiana Marcus Gosling says this was a donation from Supreme's senior managers and it's one of three which the company collected. Office staff and the sales team also made separate contributions to the effort. We were just really heartbroken about what happened to Dominica and we wanted the opportunity. We wanted to take this time to know to just give back to to, to give to the people because we were so fortunate to be spared and you know it's I guess we will never know what that will feel like and we want that if we're in the same situation that you know the same we will have the same experience where people will be willing to give back to us in the same um, capacity. We brought water, we brought some candles, we brought cereals, we brought some stuff. Prime Minister and, and, and our viewers on TV and online would, uh, uh, would understand that we are taking a moment for the Prime Minister to uh, collect himself again because, as I said, just telling the story is an extraordinarily difficult thing for the Prime Minister. Uh, in terms of the countries who have assisted, uh, talk to me about, about the number well, of countries, certainly Antigua and well, well, you know, a lot of the countries have responded in the OECS and CARICOM. Every single country has responded. Um, the French, the, the British. I'm supposed to speak to Prime Minister Trudeau of Canada at 2 o'clock today. Um, the, the Moroccan government, the Venezuelan government, the, the Cubans, uh, Martinique, and French Guiana, Guadeloupe. I mean, many countries are, are, are pouring in various organizations. And, uh, you know, um, Antigua and Barbuda has been very helpful. The Prime Minister has been providing great assistance, the Prime Minister of St. Lucia, the Prime Minister of Grenada in their respective roles as um, Car um, OECS and CARICOM uh, chair, chair, chairman. Um, so the world is, is mobilizing to assist us. Uh, we're going to need a lot of helicopter services yes. to airlift the supplies to the respective communities. So if anybody's listening to me, helicopter services are, are going to be critical uh, to get the supplies to the people. In, in, in large quantities um, so that we can minimize their, their, their misery and their suffering and also the fact that they, they really do need the water supply. Every village I've been to, um, they have indicated me water, water and um, supplies for the, for, the, for the babies and infants. Officials are describing the situation here in Roseau, Dominica as desperate as food, water and other essential supplies begin to dwindle. Some traveled miles to get into the city, all of them with stories to tell of the overwhelming experience that was Hurricane Maria. The winds were like, whoa, and we live very on the, the tallest point, as I said. It's like a hill, basically. So, yeah, I, I, after the hurricane, I went out and I could not believe what I was seeing. I talked to some of my friends and they sheltered in, 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 in wardrobes, even the fridges. Remove all the shells in the fridges, go in the fridge and sheltered in the fridge. You know, so it was it was a treacherous time. Real, real, real treacherous time. It was just destruction, destruction, destruction. I tell you, I stayed in my house with my wife and my two children for eight hours now, eight hours. Cannot move, just bending in a corner trying to hide it. Because the kind of things I'm hearing is just like, it's just destruction, the wind. First time I experienced in my life, it's just destruction, destruction. In Nigeria, we don't have so much natural disasters. We have floods, we have rain, but this is like on a grand scale, you know. Okay, at night, we were like in the bedroom area. We just had things hitting us, falling on us, and pretty much we were safe in my house. But when we got outside, trees had fallen, poles had fallen, and like I'm hearing that a lot of lives has been lost, and that's no good. And like water, there's no water, there's no light. At night, we just get so bored. We try to sleep. It's like the night is so long. You can't wait for light, for money to come so we just we just keep praying with widespread looting and desperation increasing people of varying nationalities are doing all they can to get food water or even a lift to safety 
I am here expecting to hear some good news from Canadian officials coming in through a British aircraft later. And uh, I'm just hoping to hear like a specific evacuation date and where we're going. I'm, I just need a place where I can tell my mom and my family that I'm safe, that I'm okay. And um, yeah, that, that's all I'm expecting at this point. Okay, so we hope that our country, Nigeria, will come, you know, rescue us and take us. Not like we, we empathize with the Dominicans here, yeah, but since we have somewhere better we could go to, we'll be so happy if the Nigerian government could come get us. Since then, we've had no word on how many people actually made it out of the country. Amid the turmoil on the streets, we've seen small acts of kindness, brazen acts of desperation, and people showing contentment with what they have. It's all in an effort to survive the devastating aftermath of Hurricane Maria. Kareem Smith, CBC News. So baby supplies, so water, tarpaulins, yeah. baby supplies are in greatest need. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Have some of the relief supplies started to reach some of the most affected persons yet? We, we did not today, so so we did not from 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 today. Excellent. Yeah. And, and in terms of the areas, Prime Minister, that you will be kind of you know making priority. I don't know. I mean, as you said, all the country was significantly devastated. But in terms of the the, the areas that you're going first with the relief supplies, the the entire east of Dominica, um, the the south, the extreme south, because this area is a complete cut off, and. The south, you know, uh, is, it has always been a challenge community. The inner communities, Campbell, uh, Bells, which is in, in, the, in, the, um, in the rainforest area, a uh, very um, disaster-prone community. Uh, Mount Prosper and Loda in the, in the valley. Um, the Canlego territory where the indigenous people reside. Uh, we need to get supplies in there into Good Hope and Pudis Sufre. Uh, because those communities are cut off in terms of road traffic. We're going to have a particular challenge in, in, in um, Pidi Sufre because there are no landing pads, so we may have to just drop off the supplies to them. Or we're also trying to get boats into there, but the seas have been, have been rough, so that has um, compromised our ability to get in there. Um, so the, the logistics of getting the supplies there is going to be critical. Yes, yes. Um, so we have the various uh, international regional teams on island. They have been um, made part of the uh, emergency operations and they are assisting in putting logistics in place to get things going. So I um, authorized and approved the uh, strategy last night and they're now effecting it today. Brilliant, brilliant. It's, it's excellent, Prime Minister, that uh, the region has so far rallied to Dominica's support and um, Prime Minister Gaston Brown here in Antigua and Barbuda has given his full commitment sure. that the, uh, the Antigua and Barbuda, the government and the people here will give you your, give you our full support. Sure. I, I wasn't actually in touch with Prime Minister Brown while my roof was going. You know. We still had um, uh, cell connection. Okay. Uh, so I was, in fact, telling him what was happening, okay. what was happening. You know. Yes. Um, but um, you know the world. Everybody has been has been very supportive. We're very appreciative of that. Dominica is going to need all of the help uh, the world can offer. Uh, as small as it is, or as large as it is, will help. Will welcome the help for the people. Brilliant. And 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 certainly, the Prime Minister, the world has responded in times like these when the worst of nature has reared its head, the best of humanity has we're, has, has also um, balanced out. Uh, talk to me, Prime Minister, about the impact that this would have had on the recovery after Tropical Storm Erica in 2015 because the country was essentially just still in the recovery phase That's following right. Erica. So how, how far has this put you back now? Um, put us back quite a bit uh, because we still have Erica to deal with. And on top of Erica, we have uh, Hurricane uh, Maria. Um, with Erica, we had to relocate several villages. We, we have built many homes to replace them. We were doing a major housing project with 341 homes with all of the infrastructure, um, um, health clinics and uh, all of the amenities. Uh, and and with, with, with Hurricane Maria, we also have to take critical decisions in relocating many communities in Dominica. Uh, so there will be quite a number of villages that will have to be abandoned and have the people completely relocated. Um, homes will have to be built for them. 
um, and, and try to restore their, their lives and their livelihoods as quickly as possible. Yes, uh, Prime Minister, uh, a lot of uh, residents of Dominica who are living here, for example, in Antigua and Barbuda, the rest of the region, uh, they are very desperate to reach their relatives, want to know the uh, welfare of their relatives. Uh, what is being put in place, given that communication has taken a major blow, what is going to be put in place in the short term to try to boost the, the communication services there? Well, we have um, digital cells as flowing people. Uh, they came in yesterday. Uh, to assist with restoring. Also, Flo has been working uh, to extend the, the coverage. Uh, we're hoping that we can get some internet service moving so we can have a point of, of contact. There are no landlines functioning in the country, um, so that's a challenge. Uh, we have very limited um, um, cell coverage, you know, mainly in the city. Might go a few miles off. Um, so, both telecommunications providers are working privilegedly to restore us, uh, as much as possible of the telecommunication services. Uh, and we will be setting up our missions in London and New York and Washington to assist with providing information to citizens out of the, out of the, out of the region who are seeking information about their relatives and friends. Um, my advice to many of the citizens who have concerned is that we need to manage our, our anxiety so always um, try to think that they're alive rather than they're dead um, and many people have watched up me and have been able to tell them okay well i met your sister i met your mom she said she's fine and so forth very good um, so I I, I I i i i once you tell me the name i will when i get in there i'll ask about the person and i'll see well the person is fine and so forth very good so we we're in touch with people and um in terms of fatalities, I would advise them to remain calm and think on the positive side with regards to that. Excellent. Excellent. And you've been able to yeah. uh, try to ease some of the sure, concerns, sure. Prime Minister. Uh, uh, that's communication services. What about water and electricity? Yeah. The water company is, uh, we're hoping that we can turn on because what we did before the hurricane uh, was to shut off a lot of the water systems um, to secure that which is the water in the tanks. So we have water in the tanks that we're seeking. We're now checking to see the water connections. So if the connections are fine from the uh, storage facilities to the connecting pipes, then we can turn on the water supply for the city and the greater Rosa area. That will cover about a quarter of the country um, in terms of the supply of water for the Rosa area, Castle Comfort and uh, Mount Daniel and Wall House and so forth, yes. and the entire city. So they were doing that yesterday and, and today. Um, I, I mean, I went to my own village yesterday, and uh, the villagers themselves were seeking to reconnect the water. There were pipes broken, and they went up to the, to the, to the mountains, reconnecting the pipes um, to, to restore water. So even in the absence of, of, uh, uh, of a very um, robust state apparatus or something, people are the community out. spirit is yeah, kicking people, in the people, people are moving and so and helping themselves that's right yes so uh, i'm sure you're very heartened by that because as we said worst of nature met by the best of humanity yeah i mean we meet people in the streets and you tell them look get going you know just just put the galvanized on the side of the road the, the, the boards and we take them later on let us create access and so forth you know um and, and focus on making life better for all of us you know um if we are engaging engaging ourselves in things that are not uh, the, the right things that will make, make it more, much more difficult for all of us and so on. Yes. But there's a growing, growing sense, and I think once most of us would have known that our relatives are, are fine, then we get into the groove of, of really um, helping the communities and so on. Yes. Uh, and Prime Minister, in terms of um, the, the message, you, you touched on it a while ago, but the message to Dominicans who obviously are naturally resilient, so helping themselves and so on, and picking themselves up from this, this disaster, what would you say to your, uh, to, to your citizens at this point? I mean, it's going to be a, a very long and difficult um, journey, but I am confident that if we remain united as a people, we can bounce back. It will take us some time. Um, as for myself, I am completely committed to the country and doing what I can uh, to assist with the, with the uh, raising the necessary uh, financing and, and making contact. I had originally no intention of going to the United Nations, but I have decided to go, so I'll be traveling to New York tomorrow to address the United Nations General Assembly, uh, to speak to the international community, to have meetings with the UN Secretary General. 
to outline um, uh, Dominica's situation and how we believe the international community could assist us. So, so we will not leave any stone unturned. Uh, we all have to play our part as Dominicans, irrespective of who we are. There cannot be no differences whatsoever. We have all been impacted, and we can only make life better for ourselves if we work together. What do you think this, what do you think this disaster, Prime Minister, has taught the world? If the world were to learn a lesson from what has happened in Dominica, what do you think that lesson would be? Well, unfortunately, you know, we have to wait for Irma and Maria uh, to let the world understand what we've been saying to them for a long time that we're very vulnerable. Uh, we're exposed to the, to, the, to the ravages of climate change and um, we need access to resources to build more resilient societies and countries. Uh, we, we have been playing our part, but we, the extent of the resources required uh, to put in the mitigation systems is beyond us. Um, if you look at a country like, like Antigua and Barbuda, to it is very difficult for it to raise money in the international community because of its um, uh, per capita uh, and, and, and its GDP, yes. you know, um, which is unfortunate that you, you've been punished uh, for making progress. And uh, so, like ourselves, you know, the government Antigua has a huge task for its efforts to rebuild Barbuda. Um, so we hope hoping that we can, and the intention was to also join forces, you know, given Antigua a firm commitment to, to travel with Antigua, to, to speak to the international community of the need um, that Barbuda has um, in resettling the people. I will continue to join, we will certainly be even stronger with our bonds of commitment to going out there and to speaking on behalf of each other and, and the region um, for the resources that we need to rebuild our countries. And I am very comforted by the fact that there is a greater sense of unity among the leadership in the Caribbean, uh, unity in purpose. And I think with that unity and that commitment, uh, I'm very comforted. Um, the prospects could, could, be, could, could be much better. Yes. And by the way, Prime Minister, uh, this morning at the post-cabinet media briefing, the government of Antigua and Barbuda indicated that it would be making a 300,000 US dollar uh, donation to the relief effort in Dominica. Yeah, thank you very much for Tontin and Barbuda. I mean, I know you have your own challenges. Um, we do not expect um, that level of, of assistance because of, the, of your privileged um, challenges. But it, it, it speaks to the, the profoundness of the bonds of, of friendship. I would say not more friendship, but family, uh, which exists between Antigua and Dominica. Yes. Uh, we've had a very long tradition um, of, of um, family ties and, and solidarity. And, and, and the Prime Minister, Prime Minister Gaston Brown, had been providing that level of leadership. Brilliant. A penultimate question, Prime Minister, because I know that you have a, you're an extraordinarily busy man. I mean, you still have more villages to look at. You're going back to Dominica later today, right? Yes, and you have more areas to, to survey the damage there. And frighteningly, dreadfully, there might be more deaths that you are going to come upon. Uh, what would be your message to Dominicans? abroad or watching this broadcast here in Antigua, Barbuda, the rest of the Caribbean, the rest of the world, what would you say to them? I think we have to, we have to join forces um, to do what we can, uh, to mobilize uh, support to the family and friends uh, back in Dominica. As I said, it, it's going to require the, the uh, support of every single one of us, uh, individuals, countries, institutions, organizations. Uh, but I believe the Dominican diaspora has a very important role to play in, in uh, mobilizing uh, material and other resources uh, to help the country. Um, if, it's a time, if there ever has been a time when Dominica needs its people the most, it is now. Um, you know, and I think there is a, a commitment on the part of the Dominican diaspora uh, to mobilize. They did so very very well after Erica, and I, I see them even quadrupling their efforts uh, to assist uh, the homeland. Yes. Uh, Prime Minister, this broadcast is being followed by millions around the region, in Latin America, in North America, all over the world. What would you say to persons here on this Thursday, how they can assist immediately, Dominica? Well, we have a list of a number of things, a uh, number of supplies, and we will give you a copy so you can post it also. Yes. But um, I've been providing for a list, as I said, with food, water, roofing materials, lumber, plywood, windows, doors, nails, 
um, communication equipment, uh, taps and plastic sheeting, hygiene kits and comfort kits, medical supplies, baby supplies including formula, uh, baby food, wipes, diapers, adult pampers, uh, solar lanterns, uh, generators of, from 5 kVA to 10 kVA or, or even even uh, beyond that, uh, collapsible water containers, uh, the one gallon so that we can uh, pass it to the communities, yes. uh, flashlights, batteries, portable stoves, mattresses, cots, uh, energy biscuits, uh, water purification kits and tablets. So the wide range of, of, okay. um, yes. of things that, that we can provide. Uh, if we get the building material, people are prepared to, to hit the road running, to, to recover their homes and, and, and to have um, less people homeless in the country. Yes. Prime Minister, I know that the world has heard, the world has responded, and the world will continue to respond. And I am absolutely confident that your country will rise stronger by the phoenix from the ashes. Sure. Just to tell you how serious the, the, the situation is, and I, I, yes. I joke with my people. Yes. Um, when, they, when they meet me in the streets and they say, Prime Minister, my house is gone, I'm homeless. I said to you, darling, I am, I am also homeless. Um, uh, as a prime minister of the country. Yes. Um, so it, it is, uh, you know, I really thank all of you and thank the world. We look forward to uh, your continued solidarity. Um, I am here to speak on behalf of the 72,000 people who, who call Dominica their, their home permanently uh, to say to you that every one of us um, needs you now. And uh, in whatever way you can. Yes, the hospital prime minister, did, I have to mention this, no electricity there, no generator. No. Is that your biggest immediate concern? Yeah, yeah. We, because we've had to isolate um, the generator for fear of, um, of anybody getting um, um, injured or fatality. So. But the, the hospital, we, we, we run in the hospital now worse than um, in a military, in a war zone. It, it's a... Uh, we are running really an archaic system. Everything has to be manual. Um, uh, and um, we cannot, the dialysis system is, uh, machines are down because of the roofs blown off and no, no electricity. Any patient with um, critical, who need critical care, we have to elevate the person because the ICU has been completely destroyed um, by the hurricane. So uh, that's all one of our major concerns. Uh, there and um, if we can get help for this, uh, the Martinican authorities are indicated uh, prepared to assist us in airlifting uh, some of the patients to Martinique. Um, any other country who can assist with that, that, that would certainly be helpful uh, because we have quite a number of patients who require dialysis um, treatment and some of them, the last treatment they got was in, on Monday uh, before the hurricane because what we tried to do was to provide them with as much, you know, before the hurricane yes. so that um, it would last been, a yeah, yeah, right. but um, it's been it's been some days now, and, and they have not um, done that. I mean, one patient who who um, has to receive dialysis every day, dialysis treatment every day, he walked from Portsmouth in the north to Rosa. That's, so that's, that's over 21 miles. You know, and I met him at the hospital, and he says, "Look, I came to port from Portsmouth." because I am, I'm desperately in need of help. Um, there's one patient in Jubla, the family told me that if he doesn't get airlifted, um, he, he will expire. Wow. So in terms of, of, of these critical patients, it is absolutely um, urgent that we get them out. Especially, that's why you need a helicopter services, that's right. um, all the helicopters that, that are available. That's right. Prime Minister, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And I know that uh, the world will rally to the cause of helping Never Dominica to rise again. Sure. Thank you. I am, I am very optimistic on that. Thank this, you. this has been a special ABS television radio and ABS online presentation. Uh, you would have heard the very, very visceral reaction, the moving reaction of Prime Minister of the Commonwealth of Dominica, the Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, after having seen for himself the devastation, or at least part of it, that has been wrought on his country by this monstrous menace called Maria. Uh, he has uh, seen it 
and is asking for the world's assistance to ensure that Dominica will rise again. He's already said that the spirit of his people is strong and the community spirit has already started to show in relation to uh, Dominicans who are trying to help themselves restore their own water supplies and so on. Obviously, therefore, they will need any help they can get. We know that the best of humanity will arise when the worst of nature has shown itself. And Maria was for Dominica the worst of nature. Thank you so much for watching on TV and online. Thank you so much for listening on radio, wherever in the world you are. Uh, but of course, we leave you with this note that Dominica needs you at this point. I'm Garfield Burford. Good afternoon.